Today's session, like Amy said, is about adaptive outdoor opportunities um, for recreation in North Dakota and Minnesota. Um, as I stated earlier, this session is going to be recorded and slides uh, and the recording will be made available to you following this session. We'd love for you to share it. I know for sure that there are um, opportunities that I have missed um, that aren't included. And if you want to share those, um, I'd be happy to add those in after the session um, so we can make this a really uh, full uh, and inclusive uh, resource for everyone. So please go ahead and uh, feel free to put those in the chat if you know of opportunities that aren't included. Um, it certainly wasn't intentional. So um, to start off with, I wanted to talk about some places to get started if you want to get outside and play. Um, there are lots of individual organizations um, and nonprofits, and government entities that do uh, recreation across the states, across the country. Um, these are some general ideas, a good place to, to start, okay? Uh, so the first one I wanted to share with you is about an accessible playground directory. Um, so this is super cool. I learned while researching this session uh, that there is a website that's dedicated to um, tracking where accessible playgrounds are um, so that kids um, and adults of all ages and abilities can get outside um, even when it's 80% humidity and 90 degrees out. Um, they can get out and enjoy um, just having fun and being together. So. Um, this is called Accessible Playground Directory. Um, and if you just do a Google search for Accessible Playground um, Directory, you will find this. Um, and here you find information about um, accessible playgrounds. It is not only nationwide, but they do have information in other countries, which is really cool. Um, it certainly doesn't have everything. So what they do is they rely on um, local contributors that are actually able to get out there and see uh, the sites, see this playground, and list what uh, the accessibility features are for it. So right now on the screen, I have pictured a new playground that's in uh, West Fargo, which is just adjacent to me. Um, and it is a fully inclusive accessible playground. It's the first in our region. Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo. Uh, so it's really cool. It's, it's brand new in the last year. Um, it has a flat turf, all sorts of um, adaptive equipment, and it also has a communication board uh, for someone who is nonverbal. So I think that's really cool. Um, but this one is not on that accessible playground directory site just yet. So after today's session, I plan on going and uh, submitting it. Courtney, this is, yeah. this is Amy. If I can um, add another uh, accessible playground that I know is not uh, yet listed, and it's actually not quite open yet, it's called Boundless, and it is in Minnesota in Rochester, so just south of the Twin Cities, and it's actually going to be an accessible indoor recreation center. So I know our focus today is on outdoor resources, but um, I think this, this new park is going to be very similar to the one that you guys have in West Fargo, except it's indoor. Uh, so uh, for those of you who follow the Minnesota Star program on our Facebook page, we will be sharing information about this new uh, exciting resource. Thank you, Amy. That's a good um, reminder that Facebook is a great way to find information about um, these activities and locations. Um, social media is a really, um, really powerful tool when it comes to finding up-to-date information. All right, so the next slide I'm going to go to is about centers for independent living. Um, so every state has uh, various centers for independent living. And what they do is they provide information and assistance and some services to assist individuals with disabilities uh, to live independently. Um, part of that um, is recreation. Uh, we all need to be able to get out and enjoy and 
recreation is a part of life. Um, so a lot of times they will have either events that they sponsored, events that they know about um, that are available. So in the slide, I provided links um, for Minnesota and North Dakota, the center where you can go and find the nearest center for independent living um, for you. The next slide I have um, is about contacting your local park district, um, especially in larger towns. Um, local park districts often offer really cool adaptive um, opportunities for um, kids and adults, so sporting activities. I know in Fargo, they have an adaptive pickleball league, which is pretty cool. Um, so check with your local park district. They should also be able to tell you about those playgrounds um, in your area, what the accessibility features are for each one. Um, and if your park district is small and maybe doesn't offer any adaptive sports or accessible facilities, be the one to advocate for change. Um, it will benefit not only you and the person that you love or are supporting, but also future uh, generations. So don't forget, you can always advocate for change. And I just have a picture on the slide of three little tykes uh, going sledding in the winter. And they look like they're expending a lot of energy, um, more than I have. <laughs> All right. So on the next slide is another wonderful resource um, for planning your outdoor recreation. Um, and it is recreation.gov. So this is a, a national website um, that was created by the government to help everyone enjoy recreational opportunities that exist across the country. So this is everything from like campsites to activities, like cave tours. Um, you know, how do you find an accessible cave tour? How do you know which one is not gonna make you so claustrophobic? This is a great uh, resource to go to. So it's recreation.gov, and you can search by um, the area that you're in. You can have a filter a search um, to, in, to meet your accessibility needs, whatever those are. So if you need an accessible campsite, or if you're looking for a place where you wanna be able to uh, go to an accessible fishing dock, or maybe you are a trails person, you wanna get out and walk the trails, uh, ride the trails, um, where where are those trails that are going to be accessible for you? Um, so it's just a wonderful resource, recreation.gov. They even have a mobile app. Um, and you can also filter by your current location and how far away you want to be able to go. Um, it brought up tons of options that were within 100 miles of me that I didn't even know about. Um, so recreation.gov. And on the picture uh, in the slide is my grandpa really trying hard to reel up his fishing pole before I knew that uh, powered fishing poles were a thing. So it, he's pretty entertaining to watch fishing. There's a lot of effort that goes into it and enjoyment. Courtney, this is Amy. Does North Dakota Assistive have any of those power um, fishing poles? I wish that we did. Uh, we do not right now. Uh, however, if there's a, a desire, we always have the option to purchase additional equipment for our lending libraries. Um, and so North Dakota and Minnesota both have these equipment lending libraries where you can loan things out, and see if it's going to work for you. So um, here at the Minnesota Star Program, we have a, a fishing pole called Wonder Reel, and it's actually modified from a battery operated drill, and it allows individuals to cast um, and reel in one handed. So uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. That's super cool. I know that um, through North Dakota Assistive, we've worked with Options Center for Independent Living in East Grand Forks. And they were able to um, loan out a adapted fishing pole that one of our 
um, clients used and he's a big fisherman and was just got so much joy out of it. So it's great Wonderful. to be able to try these things, see if they're going to work, right? Absolutely. Hey, the next national resource uh, for recreation that I wanted to share with you is for veterans. And it's the VA Adaptive Sports and Arts uh, website. Um, here, they what their goal is, is to provide opportunities, they say, for health and healing through adaptive sports and therapeutic art programs. So you can find information about national events that are all over the country. These are huge events that they put on. Um, really varied. So on the screen here, I have groups of kayakers. I think they're out by San Diego um, in the ocean. Um, so kayaking, whatever it is that um, that your vet that you're supporting wants to be able to do. Um, you can also check with your local VA to see what opportunities uh, they offer in your area. So again, if it's not offered, be that advocate for change. And I'm so Our, jealous of Minnesota because you guys really kill it with adaptive <laughs> recreation. North Dakota's yeah. got a little way to go. Well, um, I, I do have to agree I'm partial, but um, there are uh, a lot of really wonderful resources uh, here in Minnesota. And I think uh, the state has done a pretty good job as far as uh, having that information available for folks to find out. And one of the tools um, that we're going to talk about here today is Explore Minnesota. Um, this is a, a great website. I see Courtney has put on the slide that there's blogs and articles. Um, there's one particular gentleman who um, is in a wheelchair and has kind of made his, his mission to find um, accessible places uh, throughout the state. So he's done a really nice um, blog that you can access on Explore Minnesota. Um, also, I thought it was kind of fun when I went to the webpage as I, as I scrolled down the screen, there were a bunch of Instagram photos that Minnesotans have shared of themselves in different places throughout the state that they found that were accessible and they just wanted to share that. So um, I thought that was uh, really nice. Kind of like one of the other sites that you referenced, Courtney, um, Explore Minnesota does allow you to search um, kind of customize your search by region, or if you want to look specifically by city, or maybe the accessibility features that you need access to. Um, and then in addition to outdoor activities, you can also um, find some indoor resources. So make sure you guys check out Explore Minnesota. And I will be putting in a word with the North Dakota Tourism Department about <laughs> how great Minnesota's site is and <laughs> What could maybe be improved to make uh, travel and exploring North Dakota more accessible? Uh, so that is exploreminnesota.com. Um, it's just a great website. And Amy, um, you're talking about that gentleman. Um, he's so fun. I love to watch his videos of uh, ex places that are accessible. Um, social media right now is a really great place to find this information. There's so many bloggers, uh, TikTokers, Instagram influencers, or what their title is. Um, and if you do hashtags like accessible travel or um, wheelchair friendly, things like that, you might be able to find some really great results. We are in the sharing age. All right, another resource that we wanted to share with you guys is um, PACER Center. So PACER is really a nationally recognized resource for children with disabilities and uh, proud to mention that they are a partner with Minnesota Star Program. Um, they have a really robust section on their website that lists inclusive recreation, um, adaptive sports, and summer camp options. And really what this is, is it's just a list of resources um, that directs you to other websites and um, lets you know about some of these um, opportunities that are available. And they've, they've broken it out nicely as far as, um, you know, maybe it's physical activity like dance or um, sports. Um, 
in addition to those resources, they do also list two options where people can acquire equipment for sporting activities. Um, one of the options uh, connects you to vendors. So if you're looking to purchase uh, adaptive devices or equipment for uh, recreational activities. Uh, the other is, is kind of cool. It's an exchange program that PACER holds, hosts, and it's not necessarily just for adaptive recreation. It could be any type of um, devices or equipment, durable medical equipment, things like that, that people currently own and maybe don't need any longer. So think of Facebook Marketplace or um, Craigslist, something like that. So um, I thought that was really uh, a great tool that they had on that page. It is a great tool, Amy. Thanks for uh, highlighting that. And this is such a wonderful website, guys. Pacer Center, pacer.org. They have so many things listed there. So part of the reason why I maybe didn't include every single little item was because places like Pacer Center did a better job of it than I would have. So, all right, so that's the Pacer Center. They are based in Minnesota, but I think North Dakotans can probably travel uh, over there to the Twin Cities and take part. Actually, Courtney, I do know that um, some other programs and services, th they're serving people throughout the nation. Um, one of the one of our contacts in Texas had shared about um, some work that they had done with Pacer. So they're, they're all over the place. That's awesome. Thank you. I didn't know that. Now it wants to let me go to the next one. All right. My mouse chose to stop working at that moment. Um, the next resource to share with you is Family Voices of North Dakota. So uh, Family Voices is a resource group uh, for families who have children with disabilities. Um, they have information about a lot of different things. They have monthly support calls, um, but their advocates can help connect you with a lot of local recreational activities um, that might work for your child. Uh, so that is Family Voices of North Dakota. Uh, FVND.org is their website um, and they you actually would call and they can send you a list of recreational opportunities uh, depending on your needs so that is family voices of North Dakota all right uh, so the next section we're going to go to is about hunting and fishing um, so the Minnesota DNR had this really cool photo on their Instagram of a gentleman in a kayak who is fishing. He's reeling up what looks to be a pretty massive fish. Maybe it's just the water distortion, but it looks pretty big. Um, but this next section is about hunting and fishing opportunities. Again, the Minnesota DNR has a really great website, and I'm going to let anyone talk about it. Thanks, Courtney. Yeah, um, our DNR is fantastic, as I'm sure yours is too, but um, we've got a really great team who is very concerned about accessibility, um, increasing access to folks throughout the state. Um, so I, I have so many notes about this one, but uh, they just announced um, back in uh, late July that 13 state parks um, now have all terrain track chairs available for Minnesotans to use. And on the screen, we actually have a, a picture of a young woman, her name is Brittany, who is testing out one of those track chairs. And it's actually back in the winter when there was snow. Um, and she's got a big smile on her face. Um, I, I know Brittany, and she said these chairs are just incredible. Um, they've done a really nice job placing these chairs throughout the state. Uh, in addition to listing on the website uh, a link to the state park where the chair is at, they also provide a direct phone number and a map 
of the track chair trail for each of these state parks. Um, so on the front end, you can do some research and you know figure out which park you want to go to and take a look at that map and kind of get an idea of um, how big of an area you can cover. The chairs are available year round at some of the parks, uh, but only seasonally at some of the other parks. So that's certainly something that you would want to investigate. Uh, it, they are free to use. There's no cost to use the chairs. Uh, but to get into these parks, you would need to have a state park permit uh, as you enter the park. And then also you're going to need to re reserve the chairs just because there's so few. Like I said, there's only 13 at this point and they're really kind of spread out throughout the state. Uh, when discussing uh, this webinar with the DNR, uh, I asked them about any other resources that they'd like us to highlight. And they were kind enough to mention that um, in addition to these track chairs, they do have um, a beach chair at McCarthy Beach State Park, which is north of Hibbing. So if, if you're familiar with the layout of the state of Minnesota, it's, it's kind of in north central of Minnesota. Uh, in addition to the beach chair, they also have a beach mat that can be placed on the sand. So it will give individuals who are using wheelchairs, um, it, it makes it a little easier to, to get across the sand. Uh, in addition to this, um, that they've got a new colorblind glasses pilot program, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, there are six locations right now in the state where we've got access to these uh, colorblind glasses. So the first is Lake Bronson, which is in northwest Minnesota, uh, Big Bog, which is in north central Minnesota near Upper Red Lake, uh, Lake Benid Bemidji, which is in north central Minnesota. Uh, Maplewood Lake, which is in Maplewood Lake Park. Uh, I, I right away, I was thinking that it was Maplewood in the Twin Cities, but no, it's Maplewood Lake Park, which is in Pelican Rapids, so northwestern Minnesota. Great um, place to hit up in the fall. My in-laws oh, live right by there. It is stunning. I bet. I bet the colors. And I, I don't know about you guys here off topic, but here in the Twin Cities, we're starting to see colors changing already. It's just crazy. Um, two more locations, though, for these colorblind glasses. Um, additionally, there's Glendo uh, Park, which is east of Fergus Falls. And then the, the last one is Lake Carlos, which is north of uh, Alexandria. Uh, additionally, they wanted us to share that um, there are some accessible visitor center exhibits that have audio description. Uh, Whitewater State Park, which is east of Rochester, Wild River State Park, which is one hour north of the Twin Cities. And then the last location is um, St. Croix State Park, which is about an hour and a half north of the cities. Uh, the DNR is really committed to accessibility. And I'm anticipating that we're gonna see a lot more tools and resources uh, from them in the coming years. That is so cool, Amy. Those colorblind glasses. Isn't that great? Great. And you know, I just remember too, I forgot to make, make notes on this. Um, there is a, a great park in northern Minnesota. I think it's Cayuga State Park, and I may be pronouncing that incorrectly, but they've got an adaptive biking trail. Um, so for folks who are bikers and adaptive cyclists, um, there's a great resource up there too that you guys can find out about on their website. Cool. Awesome. Um, the Minnesota DNR website is also where you'd go to find out about um, uh, permits and licenses for folks with disabilities. Um, so just, just a note, uh, that's where you'd go to find them. Let's see if my, now it wants to work. All right. Uh, so now we're going to talk about the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Uh, it's basically uh, part of our Department of Natural Resources. It's labeled a little differently. Uh, so the Game and Fish Department um, aims to uh, do wildlife conservation, et cetera, in North Dakota. Um, and it's a statewide website that they have. It also is a place to look for hunting permits. Um, you can find accessible fishing facilities and shooting ranges that are available throughout the state. Um, and when, when I say fishing facilities, I don't know why I phrased it like that. Places to fish. Uh, they, there's even an app um, on their website that you can go to. Um, 
for fishing, and I'm sure it uh, includes Minnesota information as well, land of 10,000 lakes. Um, the North Dakota Game and Fish Department offers a tracked wheelchair um, for hunters to use. So on the slide there, I have a gentleman who is hunting. He's got his, all of his orange on in that track wheelchair. Uh, he's talking to a uh, game and fish warden, um, ready to go out and hunt, I guess. Um, so they just have one right now. Um, it's available in the Bismarck area, but you can reserve it. Uh, so you would do that through their website or by calling. Um, and then they also have listings of some different opportunities um, for hunting and fishing in North Dakota. Um, so it's a good place to go and see, especially if you are a hunter or a fisher. All right. The next organization that we want to talk about is um, Fishing Has No Boundaries. Um, so this has actually uh, grown into a nationwide um, organization. It, it was founded in Wisconsin by a fishing guide. Um, he had been a guide for 40 plus years, and then he broke his leg and was having difficulty getting in and out of the boat. And that's what inspired the, the beginning of Fishing Has No Boundaries. Um, so they advocate for nationwide change um, uh, to make fishing more accessible to those with uh, disabilities. In Minnesota, uh, there is one location in the Brainerd Lakes area. Um, so they offer a weekend of fishing and camaraderie um, at Camp, Com Camp Confidence. It is this actually upcoming weekend. Um, so it's usually the fourth weekend of August. It's a pretty limited cost. It's only $45 um, and it includes all the activities and help um, with that you could need to be able to fish. Um, and they do have scholarships available uh, for those that apply. Um, Additionally, you can look and see, maybe there's a location in Wisconsin that's nearer to you um, that you wanna go to. So if you look for Fishing Has No Boundaries, uh, their website will direct you to all the different places that they exist. So they have 27 chapters in 13 states. And I have a couple young folks uh, pictured on the screen that are looking like they're having the time of their lives fishing. Uh, there's a young man who's holding up his fish with a big smile on his face. And then there's a young woman in a boat who is reeling up and has just this look of excitement. <gasps> oh, she's got a fish on. So I thought that was pretty fun. I don't know about you, Courtney, but every time I get a fish on the line, that's what my face looks like. I, I know. I'm just shocked every time. <laughs> my dad has told me that he likes fishing with me, not because I'm so great, but because of the look on my face. It was just, <laughs> just fun. All right, so next slide, I want to talk about a, uh, a hunting opportunity for North Dakotans, um, what, veteran North Dakotans. So um, it is the Injured Military Wildlife Project of North Dakota. Um, so this program, uh, what they do is they try and provide hunting and fishing opportunities to veterans who were injured in the line of service that have been dishonorably or honorably discharged honorably discharged. Um, and they provide uh, 10 deer tags a year, assistance with lodging, travel expenses, um, having a place to hunt, and assistance with all stages of the hunt from the beginning, during the hunt, after the hunt, the processing and everything. Um, so they have a deer hunt that they do. Um, uh, and those can be in different parts of the state, just depending on where the person lives or wants to hunt. And then they also uh, do a cow elk culling program in the Theodore Roosevelt State Park, which is really cool. Um, so that is open to North Dakota born veterans. Um, and through that uh, culling program, they actually have been able to donate about 10,000 pounds of elk meat a year to veterans in need. 
which is really astonishing. So not only are veterans being able to enjoy the hunt, but then the, the results of that hunt are going to be benefit um, other veterans. All right, so there's a couple of hunters on the screen with their, their bucks that look pretty darn happy. I tried to not pick the gory ones. All right, and now for a deer hunt opportunity in Minnesota. Um, you can get out-of-state hunting licenses. Um, and so if you're a North Dakota resident and you want to go on this um, deer hunt in Rydell, uh, the Rydell National Wildlife Refuge near Mentor, Minnesota, um, you can do that. So this is the second weekend of October. Um, it's organized by the Option Center for Independent Living in East Grand Forks and is a collaboration with the Minnesota DNR. Um, so they provide assistance with the hunt, um, getting to and from accessible stands. Um, if needed, you can have a stand partner to be there. They can also help you with recovering an animal um, that you have downed. Um, hunters are responsible uh, for their own transportation and accommodations, breakfast, ammunition, and weapons. Uh, and that is typically held the second week weekend of October. Looks like there were still spots available when I was looking recently. So if you are a deer hunter, go ahead and look there. Um, you do need to get your own deer license. Um, Courtney. Yes. Courtney, sorry, sorry to interrupt. This is Amy. And for anyone who is inter interested, um, Mentor, Minnesota is about four and a half hours north of the Twin Cities. Um, it's just a bit um, east of Grand Forks. All right. Thank you, Amy. All right, so um, if you wanna be involved in that, look at optionsoutdoors.org or you can call Randy at Options um, and his phone number is 218-773-6100. We have another deer hunt. Do you have something to say, Amy? Thanks, Courtney. Um, I was really excited um, when I got this slide. Uh, Twist of Fate is uh, based out of North Dakota, but I was um, really fortunate to have the opportunity to speak with Marlo Sloan, who is the current program chair. And let me tell you, he is so passionate about this program. Um, it started about 25 years ago, and it was really created uh, by a group of dedicated sportsmen and archers. Uh, they wanted to make the sport of archery more accessible to anyone with a desire to shoot a bow and arrow um, or a crossbow, regardless of their physical um, limitations. Uh, it's really grown to be a very beloved program throughout the community. Um, he shared stories about, you know, local farmers who are opening up their land and mowing pathways so wheelchairs can get through and things like that. So I thought that was pretty neat. It is an, um, an annual event and it books up well in advance. Um, he shared that applications need to be completed and submitted by July 10th of, of the upcoming season. Um, they work with people who have many different types of disabilities, uh, including blindness, amputees. He said the, the majority of the participants are in wheelchairs. Um, each year they host 12 hunters and each hunter is able to bring uh, a companion along with them. Uh, most of the items that they need for this hunt are provided by the, the program. So that includes things like tent, mattress, electricity, running water, accessible showers. Um, they're allowed to do some target practice when they arrive. Um, the, the program does pay for their deer license fee, um, meals, guides for the service, and then also the meat processing is covered. Um, this event happens the last full week in September of every year. Uh, they are booked up already this year. Um, during the final night of the camp, though, the, the Twist of Fate team hosts an open house um, with a silent and live auction, 
and a banquet and a live band. And so in addition to the folks that are there for the hunt, uh, they open it up to the public to come and uh, join the group. And it's really their annual fundraiser. It's, it's how they're able to um, secure funding to allow these um, campers to attend. Uh, the only cost really for the, the participants is uh, transportation to and from the camp. So um, Twist of Fate does not pay to get them to, to the event. And then Marlo did share with me, I asked him, you know, what does it cost per hunter? And he said it, it varies a little bit, but this year uh, it was between twelve and $1,500. And I think the biggest difference was if it was a Minnesota hunter, uh, the cost for the deer tag was significantly higher than if it was um, a North Dakota resident. But um, wonderful program. Check out the website. And um, if it's something that you guys are passionate about, I'm sure they would love donations. Oh, Thank on the you. screen too, I, sh I should mention on the screen, we've got a couple wonderful images. Um, we've got a picture of two young men, one who is in a wheelchair and he's got um, a bow that he's doing some practice with. And then there's a young man sitting next to him who I think is kind of giving him some verbal guidance on, on how to adjust his scope. And then the, the second picture is a young woman who is um, using some arm braces to help her walk and then a gentleman who was blind. And I have to tell you, Marlo did share a story with me about um, a, a hunter that he worked with who was blind and um, talked me through the process of, of how he you know, would, would stand behind this gentleman and verbally coach him on, you know, move, move your scope a little bit to the left, a little higher, and how that, that gentleman was able to independently get his own buck. Wow. Everything's possible, right? Everything's possible with, with a little help and dedication and desire. It's possible. All right, we're going to move into our adaptive sports section. Um, of course, hunting and fishing are sports, but I had to find a little way to break it up. So uh, we're going to talk about some ad different adaptive sport opportunities across the state. The first one is about Courage Kenny. All right, that, that one's mine. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm guessing a lot of you have heard of Courage Kenny. It's, it's a very... Um, uh, amazing program here in the state of Minnesota and they've got a few different locations although their uh, their main location is in Golden Valley which is in the Twin Cities um, they they do all types of work in in addition to um, the Rehabilitation Institute and so they've got a number of adaptive sports and recreation programs available um, I went on their site in preparation for today and they actually had 28 different events listed um, so you can search by class um, they have support groups available they have uh, both in-person and virtual classes um, to participate in a class or a program, there is a cost and the price really varies depending on what you're signing up for. So I, I dug a little deeper to, to get an idea of what the prices were. And for example, adaptive cycling was $10 per session um, and adaptive bowling on the other hand was $70 but that was for nine sessions. So uh, feel free to take a look at their, their site and see all the different options that are available. Um, Courtney has listed on the site, you know, um, some of the, uh, the classes include archery, baseball, bowling, uh, cycling, downhill. You, you guys will get access to the slides here. So you can certainly um, take a look at that. But on the screen, we've got a couple images. We've got one of a young man who is in a chair and it looks like he's playing some um, adaptive, uh, probably baseball, maybe softball. And there's a gentleman kind of coaching him. He's got a tee set up at home plate and um, getting ready to hit that ball out there. And then we've got another image of uh, a volunteer from Courage Kenny who's working with a young person. And I believe she's holding um, a, a putter, a golf club. Um, so she, I think she's working with her and giving her some guidance on her golf ability. Thank you, Amy. Courage Kenny Rehabilitation Institute. 
Uh, next, I want to talk about Dreams in Motion, which is located in Mandan, North Dakota. Um, they provide competitive and recreational adaptive sports opportunities um, for uh, individuals with disabilities. Um, they have many different types of activities um, from downhill skiing, tennis, track and field, basketball, dance. They had many listed on their site. Just depends on what you're interested in and what you want to do. Um, their activities are held year round. And um, if you'd like to, you can contact them at dreamsinmotioninc.com. On the slide, I have a picture of two uh, skiers uh, that are all bundled up, ski goggles and all, helmets. And one of, one of the skiers is in a seated position, and it looks like they're doing some downhill skiing. And the next organization to talk about is called Hope Inc. Um, Hope Inc. is located in the Fargo-Moorhead area, and they are open to residents of both states. And what they do is they provide a ton of different uh, family-friendly sport, family -friendly sporting and recreational opportunities uh, to individuals who have uh, mobility impairments. So it needs to be a gross motor impairment of the legs. Um, that information is all available on their site. They have a lot of FAQs as far as what it takes to participate in their activities. Um, Hope Inc., uh, they have so many different activities. They have theater, they have archery, they have a fashion show, they have cycling. Um, I have a, a former coworker whose daughter participated in the theater program and she couldn't say enough good things about it. Um, so that is Hope Inc. Lots of different options for you. Um, and they also offer uh, adaptive recreation rentals, uh, equipment rentals. So they have a beach chair that you can rent and those are on a weekly basis. So, um, if you don't have your own equipment and want to try it out or maybe go on a family vacation, uh, check with them to see if they have an option for you. Um, Hope Inc., uh, they are just, just a really cool organization. Um, so just on the screen, I have a picture of a, a young person in a wheelchair, and they are um, lining up their bow and arrow. And then also there is a smiling little guy in a hand pedal bicycle uh, ready to take off. One more North Dakota um, adaptive sporting uh, place is called Prairie Grit Adaptive Sports. Um, so this is actually an organization that was created um, by parents. They have four young kids and one of their uh, sons has spina bifida. The mom is an occupational therapist by trade, and um, they saw a need to have adaptive sporting in their area. So that's in Minot, up in the kind of northwest corner of North Dakota. And they have lots of different types of activities, indoor and outdoor. Um, they have art activities as well. They have adaptive CrossFit. If you're really motivated, um, you can go to Adaptive CrossFit. They have that at the YMCA in Minot. Adaptive gymnastics, sled hockey, fishing, golf, swimming, lots of different options. And their uh, activities are open to every, anyone with a disability who is age five and over. So I have an image on the ski screen of three skiers um, and the, they are all holding on to a bright orange guide pole uh, for the middle skier uh, to help him as he is visually impaired. Pretty cool. And they also, it seems, travel around uh, kind of the western part of North Dakota to put on different events. And then uh, next slide is just a really cool one. It's a picture of a couple gentlemen on a tandem bike. Um, 
and they are with the Twin Cities Adaptive Cycling Organization that Amy's going to talk about. They just look happy as can be, especially the gentleman in the back, um, just beaming. I I know I I love this photo. It's I I think it's on their website, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right, so Twin Cities Adaptive Cycling is a great program that's available here um, in Minnesota. And uh, by the title, it's it's in the Twin Cities area. Um, they operate May through mid-October, and they're actually in South Minneapolis. Um, the group offers low-cost use of their adaptive bikes uh, three days a week. You can sign up online to reserve a bike at a specific time. So you know that there's gonna be one there when you want it. Um, they, do part, they do pair participants with a volunteer. Um, if you are new to biking or new to their program, um, the first time they're gonna ask you to have a bike fitting. So um, basically what happens is trained staff will fit you um, to one of the bikes that they have, and then they're gonna teach you how, how to operate it. Um, the program is um, $30, I think I saw, but they do have um, scholarships available. So if it's something that you're interested in and you just are struggling to come up with the funds, you just let them know and they can work that out. There are a few different um, parks and pathways in the area that, that they're located. So um, you can get a little change of scenery each time you go, but um, great program. And they were just thrilled to hear that we were gonna be sharing their information today. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, I wasn't sure how long exactly we'd need, so we've reached the end of our slides. Um, but this is a good time for anyone to share other resources that they might uh, know about or ask questions. Um, Amy and I will do our best to answer. Hi, Courtney, this is Amy. I do want to share we had um, a post a couple of posts um, from Mike, he, he mentioned um, he wanted to say, if you aren't a member of the United States Society of AAC, uh, USS AAC, please consider joining. Um, that's the United States Society of Augmentative Communication. It's the only society that works for and with family members, um, AAC communicators and professionals. Um, he also mentioned that wheelchair travel is an amazing website. But back to the initial comment where he brought up um, uh, USS AAC, I thought that was kind of cool because do you want to share, Courtney, with uh, our viewers, our attendees, what our next webinar topic is going to be on? Yeah, uh, I'd be happy to. Our next webinar topic is on AAC or alternative and augmentative communication devices. Um, and it's how to start the school year strong with your students who use those devices. Um, so it's really aimed at educators um, and oh, bringing oh, awareness. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you froze up a little bit there. Um, I'm hoping maybe it was just on my end, but um, you, you were mentioning that it's kind of geared towards educators, um, but we're looking at, we're gonna be doing a few series. So we're gonna also have um, a session that's geared specifically towards caregivers and family members. And then also, oh, I, somebody just commented the glitch was on my end, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we did get a couple other, um, uh, Aaron mentioned up at Lake oh, Metagoshi. Metagoshi, thank you. We are so lucky to have Annie's house. Um, Aaron did provide the link and I'm sure, um, Courtney, you'll add that into the resources, correct? Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Aaron. And then I thought there was one more. Um, nope, maybe that was it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. I um, really appreciate you joining us and thank you to those who shared. Uh, we hope you can join us, um, uh, for our next webinar, very different topic, but it's on AAC, and that is going to be Wednesday, September 20th at 3 p.m. All right. Take awesome. care. Awesome. Thank you, Court.
And if anybody um, has any ideas or recommendations on future topics, we'd love to hear that too from you. You could share that information on our social media pages or reach out to us at our programs, North Dakota Assistive and the Minnesota Star Program. Thank you. Yes, we are very open to your feedback.